This is Lesson 11 from Unit 11. We're going to be looking at analyzing polyprotic acid titration curves. We have two goals here. One is to look at the curves and identify the PKAs for the various steps of deprotonation. And the second is to identify major curve species along each point in the curve. What I have here is the titration curve for 0.1 molar phosphoric acid being titrated with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. I've color-coded each one of the deprotonation steps to match up to the points along the titration curve. So let's start at the very beginning with just 0.1 molar H3PO4. So there's our initial pH of 1.62, even though it's 0.1 molar, and that's because we're at an equilibrium here. As we go through the titration, our first equivalence point will be right here. If we are using an indicator, we'll see a color change. If we're using a pH meter, we're looking for the steepest point in the curve. So we identify this as the equivalence point, which means that half of that volume is our half equivalence point. So at our half equivalence point, we can read off of the titration curve, just going straight ahead, or straight across that pKa1 equals 2.12. So let's just go ahead and write this here. We have pKa1 equals 2.12. As we continue the titration curve, we will get to the first equivalence point. Now, let's notice here that at that first half equivalence point, the concentration of the phosphoric acid is equal to the dihydrogen phosphate. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we have the concentration of H3PO4 is equal to the concentration of H2PO4 minus. Okay, so at our first equivalence point, now all we have present is primarily the H2PO4 minus. We are going to continue adding base, and at this point we will begin the second step of the reaction. So the blue part matches up here. We get to our second equivalence point, if we take the average of these two values, in other words the midpoint, we have our second half equivalence point. And so our pKa for the second step is going to be equal to 7.21. And again we take that by just running straight across over to the pH graph, or pH measurements. And at this point H2PO4 minus is exactly equal to our concentration of HPO4 2 minus. So we have uh, finished up our second equivalence point. We have just HPO4 2 minus left primarily. Now we're going through the last deprotonation shown in green and there is our third half equivalence point where pKa3 is equal to 11.66 and our major species that are present are going to be HPO4 2 minus because that's all that was present here and HPO4 3 minus. So we have HPO4 2 minus concentration is going to be equal to the PO4 3 minus concentration. So you should be able to look at a curve like this and estimate each one of the pKa values and identify which species are present at each portion along the curve. So now let's consider the titration of oxalic acid with the uh, formula shown here. What you need to do is identify what solution was in the burette what species are present in the following titrant volumes. So you're going to do what we just did with the titration curve right here. So I want you to pause and complete and then we will go over the answers. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the answers. So the first thing when I started to look at these questions was I marked the various places that I could identify on the titration curve. So my endpoints were going to be in the steepest portions, so I had two different endpoints, and then halfway between each of those were going to be my half equivalence points that I could use to determine pKa1 and pKa2. 
The solution in the burette was sodium hydroxide. I know that because the pH started low. Uh, at 5 mLs, I am before the half equivalence point. At uh, the half equivalence point, I know that the H2C2O4 is equal to HC2O4 minus. So here, uh, I had to have, oops, I flipped that around. That should be going the other way. Let's get that straight. I put my carrot going the wrong way. That should be going this direction. Okay, so I have more of the um, diprotic acid. At 15 mLs, that's the end point, so I should be just about done with this reaction here, so I should have only the monoprotic acid left. At 22.5 mLs, I'm at another half equivalence point, so I should have equal amounts of the monoprotic and the ox oxalate ion. 30 mLs, about all I have left is the oxalate ion. And then at 35 mLs, I have the same quantity of the oxalate ion, but I also now have excess hydroxide. So uh, in terms of getting the value for pKa1, uh, I estimated that it was about 1.8. And then the pKa for the oxalic acid was about 4. The last question, what was the original volume of the oxalic acid? So when you have something like this, you can only use this MAVA equals MBVB if you're doing a one-to-one -one reaction. So I only want to go to the first equivalence point because this represents a one-to-one -one reaction. So I used 0.5 for my molarity of the acid, but that was specified, and then I had 15 mLs to the first endpoint, and just plugged things in, and I got 3 mLs of the H2C2O4.